Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is a Samsung Series 9 notebook from 2012 with a Core i5 Sandy Bridge, second generation Core Series processor, four gigabytes of RAM, and as you can see, it's running Windows 10 software. But I wanted to show you how you could run something else called Remix OS just using this USB flash drive. Remix OS is a custom version of Google Android, and it is designed to look and feel a little bit like a desktop operating system. And rather than take Windows users and get them used to using Android, it's sort of designed to go the other way around. Take people who are used to running Android apps and give them the productivity that comes with having a, a taskbar and a start menu and a desktop and the ability to run apps side by side and resizable windows and so forth. So I'm going to show you a little bit about how that works. And Jide, the company that makes Remix OS, uh, has up until now released a couple of devices, including a mini PC and a tablet that come preloaded with it and partnered with uh, some other uh, companies to make it available for other third party tablets and laptops and so forth. But now with this USB flash drive version, it's available to just about anybody with a Intel or Atom based uh, computer. So let's go ahead and shut down the computer and I'll show you how to boot it up. Now the system is going to be, uh, the way you do this is going to be a little bit different depending on your computer, but on most Samsung laptops, what you're going to need to do if it's a recent model device is once it's all shut down, turn it back on and hit the F2 button to get into the settings. Now it might be F12 or F10 or F9 on other computers, but it's F2 on Samsung. It's taking a moment to shut down, so let's just go ahead and speed that up and turn it back on here, F2. And once you see something like this, you can go in to the boot area, disable secure boot if it's enabled and then you're going to want to enable legacy boot or uh, CSM OS as it says here. And once that's done, hit exit and save the changes. And this time we're going to sort of hammer the F10 key to get to the boot options menu. Some other computers will have a different uh, key, might be escape or something along those lines. Now from here, we have two options. We can go guest mode where it says no data, data will be saved to the computer or resident mode where all data is saved. Now it's saving it to the USB flash drive. So everything's running from the USB flash drive, not from your local device. So when running from this flash drive, you don't have to worry that it's going to overwrite your operating system. All of your files and everything else should be protected as long as you don't go trying to install the operating system to your internal storage, which you can do, but that's beyond the scope of this video. We're going to go into resident mode. So uh, you can see what I've already done with some apps installed and not having to log into all of my accounts and everything. Jide, the company that produces this, partnered with the folks at the Android x86 project, which is an open source project to get Android to run on desktop computers. And even though Android was designed for touchscreen devices, uh, it runs reasonably well on devices with uh, a desktop setup. It's just that some applications might not be perfect. So there's some games, for instance, that are really optimized for touch that might not work perfectly, or even just little things like when you're using a web browser, uh, some of the controls are a little bit different, and I'll show you that in a moment. Jide released the first version of Remix OS uh, about a year before the recording of this video, back in January of 2015, and they've released a number of updates since then. The company was founded by some former uh, employees of Google, and they've been working with Google to make sure that it stays a Google Mobile Services certified system, which means that you have complete access to the Google Play Store, among other things. Um, but they've put out a number of updates to fix bugs and improve performance and so forth. So here we go. We've got what looks like a start menu, what looks like a taskbar here. Uh, notifications are off on the side. And it's basically a keyboard and mouse friendly version of Android. Uh, in terms of applications, we do have access to the Google Play Store and Google Chrome web browser. And when you're launching anything from the desktop, you can just double click it to run it. Uh, it's bringing up the pages that were previously open, showing some notifications up there in the top, and we can scroll, go back, and so forth. Now there's no touch screen on this device, so what if we wanted to zoom? Well, you could hit Control alt and use the scroll wheel on your mouse, and that's how you zoom. One thing that's a little bit confusing though, you'll notice, is if you sort of move down, the tab bar disappears. And so that takes a little getting used to, because that's more of an Android style uh, thing to maximize screen real estate it comes back when you scroll up higher on the screen. Uh, another thing that takes some getting used to is right-clicking 
will not do anything. I mean, it'll do the same thing as left clicking. What you want to do to open a link in another tab is press and hold to bring up this Android style context menu. So again, if you're mostly used to Android and it's opposed to Windows, that sort of thing should be fine and should come naturally, but it's a little bit disconcerting when you're coming from Windows to Android. Now what's really special here is that we can run apps in the full screen mode that you're used to in Android, or we can resize them. Now you can't do it from any corner. You can't drag the top or the left, but from the right or the bottom, we can change the size of this window. Or we can just sort of drag it that way, or we can hit this button to maximize or minimize. Uh, we can also run multiple applications side by side. So let's go ahead and open a document in Microsoft Word mobile. So we've got a document in one window, a web browser in another, so we could research something while we're writing. And we've got side-by-side -side windows, or we could change the size of them or the position of them. Now, not all applications uh, deal with this very well. So Google Hangouts, for instance, is one that uh, currently tends to want to run in full screen, even though that's something that you might really want to run in a smaller window. Uh, videos generally work pretty well. YouTube works nicely. Netflix on this particular computer I've had trouble with uh, might work better on other computers. And that's, that's one of the things here. We're looking at alpha release of the software. Uh, January 12th, 2016, Jive is re releasing the first publicly available preview of Remix OS for PCs. And they're really soliciting feedback. They want people to tell them what works and what doesn't work and what hardware works and it doesn't work. Because up until recently, Remix OS has only really been designed to run on a handful of devices, most of which have had uh, ARM-based processors as opposed to Intel or AMD processors. So there's probably still a lot of work to do, but the company is pretty responsive and has been putting out regular updates, as I mentioned. Uh, so if we uh, want to take a look here, let's go ahead and go to YouTube. Again, resizable, repositionable. But again, it works better in some uh, applications than others. So if I wanted to play this video, for instance, that is a demo video that came on the USB flash drive using the built-in video player. Video playback sometimes seems a little bit choppy. But that might have more to do with my hardware than with the operating system, or the fact that the operating system isn't really optimized for my hardware. But overall, it's, uh, it's a nice little user interface for Android on a desktop. It's something that I've experimented a little bit with before using Jide's Ultra Tablet and Remix Mini uh, desktop PC, but this is the first time that it's really accessible to anybody who just has a USB flash drive. You don't need to buy any specific hardware for it. It might not work on every computer, but if your computer supports uh, legacy boot mode, you should be able to give it a try. If you really wanted to, you could also install it to the internal storage of your computer by either partitioning the hard drive and setting it up as a dual OS system so you could switch back and forth between Linux or Windows or whatever other operating system you're using and Remix OS. But right now it's really designed to run from USB flash drive uh, as sort of a secondary operating system. But you do have that option to save data to the device itself. And then you can take it out and plug it into a different laptop and just sort of have it as a portable environment that you can take with you from place to place. Uh, from here, you could pin things to the taskbar if you wanted to, or unpin them. There's this option to uh, minimize everything with a single button. And there's a back button here on the bottom of the screen, or up here at the top 
of the menu bars. So it takes Android applications and really sort of makes them desktop friendly. That's a look at Remix OS for PCs, uh, alpha version available to the general public starting January 12th, 2016. And it runs from a USB flash drive and it's, uh, it's sort of the, the first version of Remix OS that anybody can try uh, using existing hardware. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and a look at Remix OS for PC Alpha. When you're done, don't forget if you do need to enable Secure Boot for your computer to run its normal operating system, go back into the settings and do that. And now it should reboot into Windows.